what would you have people do if it were up to you and you were driving this and you wanted to fundamentally alter the system? You know, and frankly, you know, I'm, I'm of the mind sometimes in certain moods of, you know, you got to burn things all the way to the ground before you build them up the way you want to go again. You got to burn things all the way to the ground before you build them up the way you want to go again. Um, and thinking about that in ways that mean deep, fundamental, structural change that comes from a lot of hard work of not only organizing, but trying to address and change laws. It sounds both tough and scary. You say I'm talking about burning down. Like, you know, your life seems pretty comfortable, right? My life feels pretty good. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right here. So um, burning it down, it, you know, that's that's a tall order. And there are people who are even obviously better off. People would have even more resources to benefit from sure. as it is. Like, how do you get people to, I mean, what does that look like? I mean, how does, how do we even start that? It, I mean, are we, are we destined? Are we trapped in this cycle of, you know, some change as things look, look dire and then we get a little bit of change and then we see the system countering that and then we do it all over. Are we just stuck? Yeah. I've, I've become more and more comfortable with incremental change. Um, and, you know, pessimistic still on the fact that incremental change means that what fundamentally is still kind of persists in a way. Um, but I think the history of, you know, as you said, this is, this is not new. This is something we've been fighting against for a extremely long time and there has been significant change. So he started with the typical response of that we know is burn it all down. That is the revolutionary spirit behind critical race theory, anti-racism is that whole system of whiteness must be torn down. That's what critical theory is designed to do. Critical race theory is just an element of that. It is designed to critique something until you tear it down. It no, it no longer exists until you fundamentally change it. Yeah, but, Marxism looking at the yeah. whole capitalistic system. Yes. And so I found it very interesting that he said he's become more and more comfortable with incremental change because that's typically against their motto. Mm -hmm. right? They want the revolution. But he said he's become more and more comfortable with incremental change. But what bothers him is that he knows what was built still exists. And that is just so key to this whole framework. Mm -hmm. What is built still exists. What is what was built? It is the entire American framework and system. I don't care if it's individual rights, liberty, mm -hmm. meritocracy, liberalism, the whole thing in their mind must come down because America is fundamentally racist at its core. All yeah. That is the single narrative they live by. And so no matter what else America has stood for, no matter the founding principles, it can only go back to being one thing that kind of defines it in their mind, and that's racism. Go ahead. Yes. It when he when he moved over to incrementalism, it reminded me of the long march through the institutions. Mm -hmm. That we don't like it. This isn't really, you know, yep. what our plan is, but it's going to take a long march through the institutions yep. to be and, able to bring the change. Yep. And for people who might not understand... No, Marxism was a very revolutionary um, framework. And the fact that the revolution did not take place within the West, they had to kind of make sense of that. Mm -hmm. And they realized that there were cultural institutions that kept the West from the, the, the proletariat, the poor people from raising up against the rich people, right? And they decided that they needed to infiltrate and change those cultural institutions, whether it's the church, Christianity, uh, the uh academia, education system, all of these institutions had to be infiltrated. And so they had this thing they called the long march through the institutions because they knew eventually they had to change the institutions if they were going to change American culture and American mindset to where the revolution then could actually take place. And that's really what we're seeing today. That's why we're seeing progressive leftism, Marxism taking over academia, it's taking over all these corporations, 
the government, everything is taking you like, man, where did this come from? Well, it's been 60 years in the making. This didn't just happen overnight. They have oh, it's more than 60. More, yeah, more than 60 mm-hmm. years. Yes. Um, but now the younger generations more and more are in line with this idea of systemic racism, this idea that America is fundamentally racist, the idea that you have to tear down the system, tear down the patriarchy, all of these different heteronormity, you know, heterosexual normality, all these things that we define ourselves by must go. Right. Yep. And ironically, whenever they talk about what comes up in its place, what must be rebuilt is always Marxism. Because the goal is equal outcomes. The only way you uh, or quote unquote what they call equity. Yeah. Right. And so until there is equity, until this new system produces equal outcomes among all groups, in their mind, there's work to be done and there's injustice because justice is only served when everyone has equal outcomes, not equal opportunity, not equality, equal outcomes, a.k.a. equity. And so that's their whole goal. And that's what they believe justice is. They think they're in the right. They believe this with all of their heart. They might be good people, quote unquote. But this is what their aim is. And I think a lot of people need to wake up and understand that that's what they're saying. That's what they're talking about. 